Today we will go to discuss for the image compression, the part D. Uh, might be today we will finish this chapter or maybe one JPEG compression will remain, which is that part is also is one of the interesting parts regarding this compression technique. And we'll give you the view that uh, how suppose we have the compression and changing conversion for the format of the pictures. Before uh, we are going to uh, talk more regarding this subject, once again, I will show you this famous graph and you know that we are going to discuss regarding this part, means the next part that we will talk is morphological processing, that this part up to here will be finished. If we have time, we go for the object recognition and color image processing, at least one lecture or so I will try to give you about these two that we can finish all this cycle. Uh, the next thing is that today we will talk about uh, firstly to finish the last lecture uh, because Hoffman coding was remained. I'm going to uh, demonstrate and have the demo about that in MASLA that you can analyze it better. <laughs> then we go for the lossy coding uh, technique transform coding, DCT, vector quantization, and JPEG compression that I don't know. If we have time today, we can finish it. Otherwise, the last part for image compression will be JPEG uh, compression, and uh, then we can say that this chapter is completely finished, more than even uh, the uh, stage or uh, the information that you have in your book we talk more about it, that is the useful event parts in uh, digital image processing lecture. And let us see this Hoffman encoding and decoding in MATLAB. We have some codes that we are going to review that. Um, how we should run this code, because previous lecture we taught uh, about the uh, theories and also the mathematical points which we have in the image processing part. But uh, first we should list the source probability in the decreasing order, as you know. Then we should combine the probabilities of two symbols which having the lowest probability and record the resultant probabilities. Uh, this is the, we call it reduction. And this procedure is repeated until there are two order probabilities remain. As you remember, and even we show you in the clips, we add the less probabilities until the last two numbers will remain. Then we start the encoding with the last reduction, which consists of exactly two order probabilities. We will assign the zero as the first digits in the codes word for all the source symbols associated with the first property, and we will give one to the second problem. Now we will go back and assign zero and one to the again second digit for the two probabilities that were combined in the previous uh, reduction step and uh, returning all assignments made in step three. Uh, in step five, we will keep the regressing in this way until the first column is reached and calculate the entropy. The entropy code is the average number of bits needed to decode a given pattern. Then step seven is that we should calculate the efficiency for evaluating the source code generating. You, then you need to calculate the efficiency based on this formula. I mean, the efficiency is equal to entropy of HX divided by average of code word length. Then we have the average code word length, which is we will be represented by the N, and it's equal to the accommodation of the probability, which will be multiplied by NI. And NI is a state as the length of the code word. That was the whole process and whole algorithm that we have in Hoffman coding. Now, uh, 
if I want to do this job in the MATLAB, two main function we have that we can use them. One is that Hoffman echo, which is called Hoffman coding, and syntax is equal to, syntax of that is comp equal to Hoffman echo side and uh, DICT or dict. This line will encode the signal that we represented at SIG and described by the DIX dictionary. And the argument SIG can have the uh, form of numeric vector, numeric cell uh, array or alphabetic cell array. And if SIG is a cell array, it must be either a row or a column. DICT also is the N by two cell array, which represent by n is the number of uh, designate possibility symbols to be encoded. And the first column of the DIC represent the designate symbols and the second column represent the corresponding code words. Each code word is represented as the numeric row vector and uh, no code word is DIC, uh, can be prefix of any other code word in DSIC. Uh, you can generate the dicts using the Hoffman dict also function. Uh, next uh, function which is using is Hoffman deco, which is uh, which can represent by uh, dsig, Hoffman deco comp and dict. And as you know, dict again is n by two cell array, and which in that a n is the number of distinct possibility symbols in the original signal that was encoded as com. And the first com uh, column of dic represent the designated symbols and the second column represent the corresponding code words. Each code word is represented as the numeric row vector and no code word in dic is allowed to be prefixed of any other code words in DC. You can generate the dict using the Hoffman dict function and comp using the Hoffman co uh, function. If all uh, signal value in the dict are numeric, then dict uh, DC is a vector. And if any signal value in dict uh, is alphabetical, D sign is one dimensional cell. Added. This is a uh, two function that we should use when we are going to uh, work with the uh, coding. As you may have this coding, uh, I even give you the coding uh, testing uh, process here, which first we should uh, open the MATLAB and open the code there, then we will give some for this example we will give some probability for that it will generate some code for us and then it will calculate the uh, variance here and uh, then um, for the first uh, the program will prompts you to enter uh, uh, numbers between one two and six when you enter three the code 11 appears on the screen and this code is nothing by character corresponding to number three hence encoding is done successfully then with the second step for decoding uh, enter beta stream of one one and the output will be generated is three uh, even instead of three you can enter out any various combination between one two six uh, for this, uh, I think we can run the MATLABs now and see how it's work. But before that, um, this is the code that purposefully I put it here. And uh, you can also uh, have that. And we have one task for this code, which is that I want that you run this and draw the flow chart of working and also flow chart of uh, testing this code, analyze the uh, result, and also what you can do, you can calculate with hand, and then take the photo of your uh, calculation and put it in the PPT. Then I want for this part, just two page of PPT. One is that 
the flu chart of that second page is that what you will solve with the handwriting and you will check with the matlab score let me um, do one thing run my matlab and also uh, show you how this work should be tested because the theoretical behind that we review already in the last lecture and then we can continue for the rest of today uh, lecture. Let me see the desktop. If I can share the desktop, then it's great. Okay, uh, can you please see my desktop now? MATLAB environment, you should see. Yes, sir. Okay, good. This is the code that we have, and you will see that we should first enter the probabilities. I have one uh, ready sample to uh, what we can say just to uh, short to t due to the shortest of the time, I made one sample that we can also see the result of uh, this sample uh, very fast. And the analyzation for these codes, as I said, that it's your job that you will do it and will send for me. Um, that. Uh, Later we can, why I made this file? Because then we can be sure that program is working proper. Or not. I, before this, I check with hand and I know the result, but now it's your job to also do the same things. Okay, suppose I have these probabilities, 0 0.3, 0 0.25, 0 0.2, 0 0.12, 0 0.8, 0.5. This is the probability that I have in my uh, code. First step is that it should uh, make it to the uh, decreasing format and also then should add and assign some uh, binary codes to that. This is the first step that it will take. Then enter the symbols in between. Suppose we will take a uh, number of symbols. We will take three here. Then uh, you will see that encoded output will be one and one and enter the bit string. Uh, we will put again one. No one. Now here you will see that it's to the entropy beta stream, which it will be equal to 2.36017. And also efficiency is this much, 99%. M and S are the other variable which will be calculated based on the formula that we have. And the variable should be two. Here, if you see, I don't know, the small windows, In the small windows, uh, I calculate with uh, also hand and be sure about it. Let's try once more, maybe. It can, not bad if we do it. We'll again give the probability, but here I will give the number six, and then a beta stream that I will give three, uh, yes, I should give the bit stream of the previous number. Six and bit stream uh, based on even the previous one, one and one. Efficiency is this much, uh, entropy is this much, and variable again, it will say, see, it, it said that this number is belonging to three. Let us see. One and one is this one, one and one is three. Like this, I want you to test this code. Uh, but it's uh, 
a little bit tricky to writing the code for that. I don't want that you, uh, with this knowledge about the math labs, can write this code, but you should understand this. And little bit, it's from the mathematical mainly part of the math labs. It's not fully for the image. That is why I say that I make the code ready for you that you can just enjoy. Okay, that was the first thing that today I want to tell you. <clears throat> and uh, now let us continue our uh, job about the comparison method that we have and uh, we can talk now regarding that part. Uh, any question from students till now? So I have a question. Yes, please, Kaya. So, so when we inputting um, the, the numbers, so I noticed with the probabilities, you put them in list form. So that's that's the only way we should put them in, or we can just type the numbers down and put a space, number, space, and so on. Uh, what do you mean? You mean the array of the probability that I enter? Yes, so it should be an array, or we can just input the numbers. It's, it's, it's better them. that it will be in the array, because you really you are going to work with the vectors inside of the MATLABs. It's better that you enter the array at the time. <laughs> okay. And uh, it it okay. it's also depends on the uh, function that we use in MATLAB. You know that a specific function needs mainly the array form of the numbers. Mm -hmm. One by one, maybe it's uh, it's not working well. I'm I'm not sure because I didn't test. But as I remember, uh, if you put it with the form of the numbers by numbers. It it will not uh, mm. work. Okay. About this, I'm sure. Okay. Yeah, it's depend on the function. Good. Any more question, please? No question. Uh, okay. Let us continue. I think rest of the students are sleeping now. No sir. no, sir. No, sir. No one is sleeping here. Okay, but but uh, when I ask, at least I wanted some response from your side. Anyway, let us continue. The taxonomy of the lossy methods, uh, which uh, it's the second methods of the compression, I bring here uh, for you. And you will see we have at least six methods. What I tell you in the first lecture of comparison, comparison, uh, comparison methods, that was we have various methods. Why we select this much uh, is that first is that uh, some of them are uh, related to the advanced DIP methods, and some are related to uh, maybe new method which daily. Some researchers are also working with these methods, and maybe tomorrow they will publish one paper in that. But we select few of them based on your book. Okay. Uh, mainly when this much data is okay, but if you want deeply go inside of this compression, this is my uh, even fixed statement that this DIP course can be uh, more than a uh, two, three subjects even in the carriers, and maybe we can have some more advanced DIP uh, lectures after finishing all, and it's not limited to just whatever knowledge that we will share. Everyday teacher or uh, t uh, researcher are working <clears throat> based on that. But as I review even with the other teacher in the world, they also select these uh, parts that we have in the book and covering that we have in the book for your state is proper. You can continue for uh, more uh, data if you want by reading the articles and also some recent book. Uh, okay, uh, these are the parts that we have in logic coding, means that block transaction coding, logic predictive methods, 
which we know as the DCT that we will review here. Delta modulation here, uh, HAR, uh, sorry, HADMAR, uh, DPCM, ADPCM, and Delta. Some transforming coding we have, some uh, fractional coding like DFT, HAR, SC, SCT, and so on. Subband coding that we have and also some vector quantization. Uh, between them, we, we, we are, we'll select some methods and we'll be review. I wish that today I can finish this part till JPEG comparison that um, on the next lectures of this week, we can finish all this comparison method. Let us see. <laughs> okay, lossy compression uh, is something like, uh, uh, transform the image into some other domain to reduce the interpixel redundancy. That's something that we reviewed before. Here in the graph, we, I show that suppose you have the input image which have the dimension of n by n. First step for you is that you should construct the n by n some some sub images. Then forward the transform to that then do the quantizer, and then do the symbol encoding, and then compress the image. This is one thing that you have. And then if we want, we want to decompress that, what we should do, first we should enter the comparison uh, image, and then do the symbol decoder, inverse the transform, and then merge n by n some image, then it will be decompressed. But something that you should be, you should remember, the input image at the upper box and the decompressed one uh, should not be similar by all details. Because when you will do the comparison, some parts of data will be lost. Let us say some unwanted. But really, unwanted data is not meaning of data. Remember that. Unwanted data, we, re we know it as the noise. We can say some repeated data, some redundant data, something that we, we are talking till today even about it. <clears throat> some data that uh, have the rule, but the rule are not much more critical in our image construction, okay? Remember this point also, uh, that it's, maybe you will say that we will do the zip file and then that person remove, uh, receive the zip file and open and it's work. But somehow even you see, when you will see the, send the zip file, the quality of the photo, the quality of the file will be also reduced. I want that you first you uh, have this point in your mind. Let us see about the transform coding. You know, in transform coding, the reversible uh, linear transform, such as Fourier transform, DCT, uh, and et cetera, will be used to map the input image into the, some set of transform coefficient. Then these transform uh, coefficients are quantized and then coded, same as the block that we have uh, before. Then in uh, this method, I mean the transform coding, it consists of decomposition of image to some smaller sub-image, transformation, quantization, and symbol encoding. And the decoding process will be consist of symbol decoding, inverse, and finally, merging of sub-image. But sub-image decomposition and transformation decolorate the image pixel or here uh, packs uh, as much as information as possible into some a smaller number of transform coefficient. Part of the quantization then selectively eliminates or more uh, coarsely uh, quantize the coefficient that carry least information with a very little image dissertation. The quantize transform coefficients can then be encoded using the suitable variable length coding such as Hoffman coding that we have before. And then for selecting the transform, what we should do? 
Transform is selected based on some following described characters. Characters. One is that uh, contents decoloration, which packing the most amount of the energy in the fewest number of coefficients, which this method we call it energy uh, compaction. Second is the content uh, independent uh, basis function and uh, fast implementation or computational com complexity. These are the uh, major criteria or major uh, uh, characteristics that we should know when we want to do the transform selection part. Uh, then in transform coding, we say that we have sub image, but sub image size selection also should have some criteria like this that it's generally should select it to be some positive integer of uh, power of two as the simplifies the computation of the transformer and typical sub image size should be something like 8 by 8 or 16 by 60. You will see that it's in the form of square. It has the uh, fix, uh, not fix, uh, equal row and column. In the second part, we have the bit allocation, which in that quantization is to return only the fraction of transform coefficient. For this, we have two methods. One is that zonal coding, which returning only those transform coefficient with a large variance and encoding them using the variable length of the code. The second part could be the threshold coding, which returning only those transform coefficient with the large magnitude and encoding them, which using the variable length uh, code. Uh, if we want to see more about this uh, zonal coding step, we can say that in zonal coding step, we calculate the variance of each coefficient. Then we arrange the coefficients in the accepting order of their variance. We will return only the first k large variance of coefficient, and then with the Fourth step, we will encoding each of the return coefficient using the variable length coding technique with number of bits proportional to its variance. You will see here, these are the steps or the algorithm for the zonal coding. And for the threshold coding step, uh, we have uh, three more uh, parts, which in that, uh, first, we will arrange the coefficients in accepting order of the magnitude, and then we will return or the first k large magnitude coefficient. Third step is encode each of the return coefficient using the variables length coding technique. This is the uh, main step that we should have with these two uh, methods. Uh, which other uh, available transformation we have? We have the Kerhon Love Transform or KLT, which is basing function or contents depend and computer, uh, computationally it's complex. We have DFT and FFT, which is a discrete Fourier transform and fast Fourier transform, which both two methods are real and imaginary components. Uh, means it's work based on the amplitude and phase. And, but on the other side, the benefit is that this algorithm is very fast, or it's fast algorithm, not very. This secret cosine transform, which we know it as DCT, this is the real transformation, and it's fast algorithm, and it's the best energy hacking properties. The next, uh, algorithm that we can uh, review is the WHD or Walsh-Hammond uh, 
Hadamard uh, transform. Uh, it's based on the poor energy packing property and it's simple hardware implementation, low cost and also fast. Let us see, suppose the example regarding the Fourier transform, as we know the equation of that, we should note that the magnitude of Ft decrease as u and v will be increased. Here we have some uh, image which after using the Fourier transform, it will be compressed like this. But if we want to calculate, uh, you should know that uh, this is the formula and uh, as you will see, this accommodation between the f prime, fxy minus fxy power by 2, will be very small as the difference between the compression of the source image and the difference between compressed image as f prime and the original image, which we will show with the fxy formula. As you saw, in these transforms, uh, uh, selection method T, U, and V in the above formula can be computed by using the various transformation. It means that these two uh, T, U, and V, if, if we want to short all the transform sections, all the transform methods in one formula, we can show it with this formula, F, X, Y. Then remember that this T, U, and V. Uh, can be like DFT, like DCT, like KLT, okay, or uh, even PCA, principal components analysis. And suppose JPEG will use just DCT for handling the interpixel redundancy. Uh, as we talk about the DCT transform, then let us uh, view some clips regarding this uh, DCT. I don't know that. Is it visible from your side? Can you see this uh, clips now? Can you yes, see sir. the screen? Yes, yes sir. sir. We can see the screen. Okay, good. Yeah. Then uh, I thought that maybe this will be helpful, which I found from the net. And that was the good and informative clips uh, for you uh, if you want to even uh, see it from other person's talk and other person experience we'll see. Let us see about this DCT. You, we know that DCT is the full form, uh, short form of discrete cosine transform. And uh, okay, I think I do the mistake one minute. Let us see first what they say, then I will describe this city for you. If we have the image of F, which is the special domain, it's in. And as you know, the meaning of transformation is that we want to convert from the special domain to the frequency domain. Okay, this is the main uh, meaning for the uh, uh, this transformation. In this city, can you this job? Means that from a special domain, we can transfer to the frequency domain. Is there any other methods? Yes, we have DFT also method, which they can do this job and do this transformation. And uh, you should really know that this is uh, the short form of discrete cosine transform, which is this cosine form is the real uh, part of here. Should remember that DFT has the complex term, 
and in it's more used in the DSP part. Okay, then the work of DFT is that it should convert from the small f, which is in the special one, to the big F, which is in the form of the frequency. See, suppose we have one dimensional image. In a special uh, domain, we have Fx, which will become capital after uh, DCT methods. In the two dimensional methods, if X and Y we have, then after DCT, it should become the caps of F, X, and Y. Then how we can apply the DCT to have this capsule, uh, cap of F, U, and V? Um, our job is that finding the cap of F U or cap of F U and V with uh, this notation that F caps of F U it's in the one dimension and caps of uh, F U and V it's in the capital uh, it's in the two dimension. For one dimension, you can do the this. C multiplied by F for 2D, C into dimensional, uh, into F, original F, and again C to a CT. C we know as the cosine matrix, which will be used to calculate, and this is the cosine uh, matrix, which we have, is that this formula. For suppose for C or cosine matrix for the U and V, it will be of uh, one divided by N square roots when U is equal to zero. As we say that the matrix will be U and V as a he mentioned in this matrix and when we say u is zero what does it mean it can be it has one row and also it have the values for the v then root two by n we have for uh, with the cosine of this formula that is mentioned here i will talk later again Suppose we have the N4, then what should be the cosine uh, matrix will be something like this. U is equal to 0, 1, 2, and 3, because N is 4. Uh, and we should remember that the members are something like this. It will start from 0 to that number, 0 to 4. First row is root square of 1 equal to n. And you, saw, you know that 1 by, by 4 root square of the root square of that will be, which is equal to 0.5 is the first one. For the rest of that, we should use the second formula. Uh, suppose we have four by four with the C, U, S, V, uh, C, U, and V, you will say that. First is U is zero, one, two, three, and one, V is equal to zero, one, two, three. First is one divided by four root square, which is po zero point four, and it's equal to uh, 0.5. Rest of the formula, formula is different that we should calculate based on the second formula that I give you. But u is one and v is zero, you should remember. 
Next is u is 1, v is 1, which again it will be calculated. Uh, so something that you should know for the row 2, the value is equal to the 0. Something like mirror value we have here. And then we can calculate for the column two and column three. For three, we will again calculate uh, the formula, but it has again that mirror that we say, and 0 0.653 and 0 0.273 will come here, C. And you should know now we have some negative value, which uh, based on the calculation will come out. Uh, then this is the cosine matrix that we have. Then, as you know, and you see now, first thing to calculate that is DCT is cosine value. And one thing that you should remember, C multiplied by C transpose, it's uh, not a uh, sign. And remember that DCT and DFT is different. You should not mix them together. And this DCT has the real times and also is orthogonal. Second thing is that, uh, this method will use for JPEG uh, compression that we will talk. Also, this part, uh, they call it sinusoidal uh, function. They call it sinus fu function also because in the form of the function, you can manipulate between uh, cosine and also sine. And something that you should know about both functions, DCT and DFT, is that both of them are sinus uh, order function part. Okay, that was very short uh, clips. Uh, now, I don't want that you remember all, but now I want to just you have some info. I think the second lecture, we will talk more about uh, this uh, part. Today for the second lecture also we have uh, Monshi's talk, which is about um, face recognition, one nice application that he prepared for us. Uh, I think now uh, for the first part, just take some rest. Then what we learned that we have two formula in DCT or the secret cosine transform. One is that former forward, which, uh, as we said, we have alpha u, alpha v as the uh, 2D point of view to the image, and two accommodation of this formula, f, x, y, which is my pictures, and the next is the cosine uh, formula or cosine uh, part, which will be multiplied by this, and then we have the accommodation between y, between 0 to n minus 1, and Accommodation of x uh, equal to 0 to n minus 1. This can be the forward formula. And as we talk, the u and v in the matrix can be from 0 to n minus 1. Okay. The next thing that we should know is uh, the inverse part, which in that you have the u. Uh, v and alpha v multiplied by c u v. This is the cosine uh, matrix, which multiply again to the cosine uh, terms. And you should remember that alpha of u, it's, if u is equal to zero, it's equal to 
uh, 1 divided by n square 2, uh, root square 2. And if uh, u is greater than 0, it's 2 divided by n. On the other side, alpha of v is equal to 1 divided by n root square 2. If v is equal to 0 and 2 divided by n root square 2, if v is greater than uh, 0. This is the formula which we can um, have it when we have the 2D form of the image or we have the image in the form of 2D. Uh, let's continue the basic function for suppose 4 by 4 image as you can see here. We have the V direction at the top and V as a, a row here. And then in this, uh, we are going uh, to see the cosine of different frequency inside this image. Uh, it can be the four by four, uh, which calculate based on that formula. More things that we can see, suppose, the difference between using the eight by eight sub image, which yield the 64 coefficient per sub image, and we are using a reconstructed image by uh, truncating 50% of coefficient, then you will see that the DCT is more compact transformation. Here, this is the DCT, WHT, and DFT, which uh, just now we are talking for DCT, but you will see that the DCT has the more compact transformation. Value is 1.13 if we want to apply it on the image. The other things that we should see, the size image collection uh, and uh, root mean square of the error. In the DCT also, it has the less, it has some value like this, as you will see, and see the WHT and FFT. Besides reconstruction of 75%, which uh, based on number of sub image I show you here, you will see that as number of sub images increase, then quality will be come near to the original one. And as suppose we have two by two, you can see it has a little bit corrupted image that we have. The, something that we should know is that DCT will minimize the article uh, our artifact. For example, boundaries between the sub image do not become very visible. And if we want to compare the DFT as the um, Fourier transform and cosine transform, uh, we will see that in the DFT we has n point which will be uh, have them periodically. But in the DCT we have two point, two n point which they become uh, periodically. It's also shown in this image that you can see the boundary point and this continuous point, uh, which we have inside of the DFT methods. Uh, okay, now uh, just to compare uh, what we can have here is that we can also check some formula regarding the DCT that, uh, again, uh, I think it's good practice for you to test uh, this DCT on your image. Uh, again, I'm going to open my uh, MATLAB software, and uh, we are going to see this uh, code. Let me first uh, clear all the previous value and close all uh, the parts. Then uh, what I have done here, we are going to check the DCT on one image that we have and then seeing the result. I run the codes. Uh, I don't know. Can you see my MATLAB environment? Yes, sir. Feedback. Yes, Feedback. sir. Okay. Okay, good, good. 
I, I run this code, but uh, let us see what we have done. First, we change it RGB to the gray. Then we give some uh, title image we show. And then we have the I, uh, image DCT with this function, DCT2IM, which will make the DCT of that. Then power of that we calculate, then we give some index, uh, and then change some value of coefficient to that to see, and then compress the image. And then finally, we have the compressed BMP image that uh, we can see here. Let us see, where is that? Output of my image. Okay, well, I didn't see the output then. For this code also, your task is to just review it and also make the flow chart for that, make the algorithm. Okay, now you will see the difference between the compressed image and this image. What we can do is something like that. We want to know the properties or uh, uh, what we can say. We want to know the image properties properties uh, and a specification that we had just if uh, you want to know the function maybe we can use the MATLAB help here see because I didn't plan before for this part that is why yes image properties but it's good uh, good practice uh, to know. Suppose if you want to check what should be the uh, image properties that you have, you can use this image properties function and then take the info. Or maybe IM info will be the better uh, option for us. Let me check in the MATLAB help or image info. I want to show you one thing. Yes, model info, I am read, I am formats, which will give you the formats and getting information of that. No, no, I don't want this. Let me rely on my memory. I am okay. I'm in full. Okay, uh, I, I will talk regarding this point after Moshi's talk for you. Uh, just say, uh, I think the format of the uh, function I should recall. Uh, what I wanted to show you that what should be the difference between DCT and after DCT? I think I forgot to add it in this code. I will do. Uh, then you will see that uh, what was the effect of the DCT on our image. Uh, that is something that uh, it may be interesting for you. Okay. Uh, let us uh, don't waste time. For this image, after uh, Moshe's talk, I will talk uh, today. Today itself, don't worry. This point just remind me to don't forget it also. But what you will see that the secret uh, cosine transfer is the basis of many image compressing uh, methods and its technique for converting the signal into some elementary frequency components. It's widely used in image compression. And if we take the information between ordinal and uh, compressed one with the DCT, the we will know how it will affect our image. Um, the next part of the lossy transformation or taxonomy that we see that was vector quantization or VQ, which uh, we will talk today about these. This vector quantization or VQ is a lossy data compression method, which is based on 
principle of black coding or uh, sorry block coding uh, instead of encoding each pixel now in this method we have the vector which representing a group of pixel will be encoded it means that we will not act on each pixel we will act on the group of the pixel in this uh, compression we will given an image uh, suppose uh, some something like a code book containing a set of code vector is designed either locally or globally the image is uh, partitioned into the set of non overlapping image vector a code vector or an image vector is a set of elements which representing a group of the pixel for example a block of 4 by 4 pixels for each image vector the code vector closes to it's uh, found from the codebook using the some distance measure, for example, uh, <clears throat> the elucidating uh, distance. And the index of uh, matching code vector will be is found and uh, encoded. Um, we have also some dec decompression, means that uh, the index first it will be decoded and the code vector at decode index is uh, retrieved and the image is reconstructed by combining the retrieved uh, code vectors. We have for this method some advantage and disadvantage. Main advantage is that it has more choice, something like high, high compression ratio and high performance. And we have some disadvantage or difficulties, which is it's computationally complex, this VQ method. Uh, let us see how it will work. It works something like this. We have the image, which we'll do the partitioning. Then the set of the image vector here, which we have, and we have some search algorithm in that, which based on the code book, Cookbook, uh, codebook we, uh, with uh, code vectors. We have the CB1 to CN and some indi uh, in indexes. Then we will do the entropy encoder to that and compress the image. Then again, if we want to do it reverse, first we should entropy decoder, then indicates and codebooks and uh, retrieval parts, then set of the code vectors. Uh, retrieved and combining and then the compress image happened for us. Mm, then think is that how we should design the code book, which is the difficult part, and it can be in local or global. In the local code book, one code book for each image, higher performance, higher computational overhead, and necessity of transmission of the codebook we have. And for some global codebook, we have one codebook for a class of image, lower computational overhead, no need for transmission of codebook, and lower trans, uh, uh, performance uh, we have. That was the first, uh, means that the little, uh, some description that we had about a VQ part. Uh, I wanted to give you some sample about this VQ in math labs, but um, I, I think with the next lecture we will do, if I could do the proper coding for that and find a good sample for you. But here, what you can do, I think it's good for you now to revise our this compression method and uh, try to uh, even um, have the some practical knowledge about them. Number of videos is on the YouTube that maybe we also use it here. Please see them uh, and learn even from that part. Um, there is no restriction that uh, you should not use the other sources also. You should learn and uh, maybe they PPT will be better than me. These PPTs are the points that I think is essential for you. Some of you maybe think that it's more, some of you think that it's less, but you can compensate between them. <laughs> Please do that, sorry. 
<laughs> do that part. And uh, remember that if you review it proper, then the doubt regarding this part will become less. What uh, we should do now, I'm going to just show you the how the image is comprised uh, with the BCT method. See what I have, what I add, I add image info com, uh, syntax inside of our uh, codes. And now you can see the two different data. Information was related to the original uh, image that you can see here, the uh, inform, uh, original data has this much file size, see? 4933253. And on the other side, the file that we, or, or the image that we uh, do the comparison on that, the size is this much less. This is the first thing that you will see. What I made, I added inside my uh, PPTs. You can run this code based on your image and check which other feature will be changed after this DST method. 